Hello and welcome to Tech24, I'm Annelise Borges. Coming up, a one-way ticket to Mars. In today's show, we talk to the man behind the initiative to build a human settlement on the Red Planet. And in Test24, what would life be like without the internet? We meet people who tried the web detox. But first, where will you be in 10 years? Well, if you're one of the lucky ones accepted into this ambitious project called Mars One, you might be on your way to the red planet. Mars One is a nonprofit organization that has put forward conceptual plans to establish a permanent human colony on Mars. Now, to help us understand why he believes this is a good idea, I am joined by Bas Lansdorp, the founder and CEO of Mars One. Bars, thank you so much for joining us today. I would like to first ask you, when and why did you start working on such an ambitious project? Um, actually, Mars One is a really old idea of mine. I started working on it uh, when I was just 20 years old, 16 years ago. Uh, I saw the pictures from the first Mars rover that NASA sent to Mars, and this inspired me to want to go to Mars. And I've been working on this on and off ever since, until three years ago we decided to start Mars One, and I worked on it uh, full time. Now, 200,000 people registered. Why do you think there are so many people wanting to leave our planet? And did you expect such a huge success? Well, we were always expecting a lot of people to be interested because we, we, we talk, we've talked to a lot of people before announcing it. And so it's not a really big surprise. And I think these are not necessarily people who want to leave the planet. These are people that want to experience the unknown. These are the types of people that migrated to Australia and to Canada and to the US uh, 100 years ago. They are the explorers uh, of, of all times. Now, you're obviously not sending 200,000 people to Mars. You're selecting them. Tell us about the selection process. What do you look for in your candidates? Well, in the, uh, in the end of last year, we announced uh, the 1,000 people that would move on to the next round. Uh, we have now about 1,000 people who are still uh, in the selection process. We'll narrow them down to about six groups of four people. And what we are looking for is uh, excellent team skills. So we're looking for people who can be uh, in a small secluded environment for three years, uh, seven months on the way to Mars and two years on Mars before the second crew joins them. And that's a very challenging psychological uh, task that they are up against. And that will be our most important selection criterion and training criterion between now and 2024 when the first crew leaves. Now, anything that involves space exploration is extremely expensive. How exactly are you funding this project? The total cost of getting our first crew on the soil is about six billion US dollars. Uh, and that's, that's a lot of money, of course, but if you compare it to uh, the grandness of the, of the event that it will be, it's actually not that much money. If the Olympic Games in London had uh, revenues of about uh, 4 billion US dollars from broadcasting rights and sponsorships, and the, the Olympic ga Games only last three weeks, uh, this will be such a big event and so many people will be watching it. Uh, that there's a lot of value in that. And right now, um, our finances are coming from uh, partnerships and investments. And in the longer term, when, uh, when we will actually start sending humans to Mars, it will come from the TV rights. And even after that, uh, we expect that revenues will come from intellectual property because Mars One is a co-owner of the intellectual property that we develop together with our suppliers to make the components for our mission. Now, finally, what do you expect life to be like on Mars? Well, life will be tough. That's uh, one thing that you can be very sure about. And every time when humans uh, move to, to new frontiers, so when, the, when, the, um, uh, when the people migrated to the U.S., when, the, when a large part of the U.S. was not yet, um, was not yet covered by, uh, uh, by humans, uh, conditions were tough and you always take a, a step back in time compared to uh, the area where you come from. And this will be the same in, in, uh, in the case for humans leaving to Mars. So they will have uh, uh, lesser medical facilities than many of the uh, developed countries here on Earth. Uh, it's very well possible that they won't be able to take a shower every day because the water will be limited, will be especially for consumption and for growing plants. So 
life will be tough, but at the same time, life will be um, very special. These are people that are setting foot on a new planet, a planet where no one has ever been before, picking up rocks that nobody has ever picked up before, and that will be their excitement. And just like the, the explorers that uh, travel to, to the Wild West or to Australia or, or to other places in the world, uh, they will gain the greatest experience that humans can gain, which is the experience of exploring, uh, ex uh, experiencing new things. Now, before I let you go, one final question, Bas. Are you going to take part in this mission? Well, I started Mars One because I wanted to go to Mars, and I still have a very big desire to go. Um, I've already explained how challenging that first crew uh, how, how challenging their conditions will be to be with just four people for three years uh, before the second crew arrives. Um, it will be Mars One's biggest task to find a crew that's up to that challenge. And I am certainly not one of the people who, is, who can do that. Uh, I'm more the, the entrepreneur who makes it happen than the, uh, the, the explorer who can do such a, a, a big challenge. But uh, I'm very hopeful that I will be on one of the follow-up missions after that. All right, thank you so much for that, Baz Lanzo from Mars One. And it's time now for us to move on. Up next, Test 24. In today's Test 24, we head to the United States for an internet detox program. What would it be like to unplug and live offline today? Here are a couple of people that did just that. Take a look. Pulling the plug on technology, this American mother and writer enforced a six-month digital detox on her family. No internet, no television, no smartphones. I came home one day, everybody, my three kids were all glued to their screens, and I just said out loud for the first time, you know, what would our lives be like without all of this? What, what would they be like? Bill, who was like shooting somebody on screen at that moment, just said without turning around, they would be boring, that's what. She switches between homes in New York and Perth in Western Australia and says she used to feel suffocated when losing signal in trains and planes. Disconnected from technology, the family learned to spend more time together. I'm not saying the conversations we had with one another were like deep philosophical and profound all the time. Often they were just ridiculous. But they were in real time, and they were face to face, and they did make us closer. Or not addicted, but like it was a default to go to those things. And then, yeah, and then after that was taken away, cold turkey, you kind of just like go do other things. They cooked, played sport, read books, and practiced music. And they're not the only ones opting to unplug. This tech journalist ditched the internet for an entire year and made a film about living offline. My first day back on the internet was terrifying. It was just, it was traumatic and it was a, an attack of information and I spent a year of doing one book at a time and one movie at a time and now I could look at 20 YouTube videos at the same time. So uh, it was really overwhelming. He switched from emails to letterboxes and rediscovered the joy of encyclopedias. And that's all we have time for. Thanks for joining us here at Tech24. We leave you today with the breathtaking images from Journey to the Stratosphere. A little over a month ago, Maxime Deray, a French developer, decided to send his GoPro to space. This is the result of that idea, with the soundtrack of Baltimore's Fireflies. Thanks for watching. Stay with us here on France 24. Look on your eyes and sleep in I'll let you sink in Baltimore Bay I drown myself deep in disgrace